the next piece of managing and maintaining our code is the fact that if we are just now starting to adopt Terraform, there's likely already resources out in our cloud providers or our SaaS applications that we want to start managing using Terraform. However, up until this point, we've really seen that Terraform is used to provision or create new resources, then we manage it from there. However, Terraform is 100% capable of pulling in existing resources that are already running in our environments, and then we can start managing and maintaining those resources using Terraform moving forward. So let's take a look at this. On the screen here, I've got a directory open, and I have a couple files, a main providers and variables.tf, and you can see in the main.tf, I don't have anything, right? I have nothing in variables, and I just have our basic providers in here. Now, if we go over to AWS, for example, maybe I have a VPC and some additional resources that I wanna pull in under management. So if I click on VPC here, you can see that I have created a VPC and several other resources, and this one's simply called Import VPC. And that's the VPC we want to import and pull under management. So what we wanna do is we wanna write our Terraform in order to do that. So what we'll do is we'll go over to our Terraform and when you're importing a resource, the first thing you really need to do is you need somewhere to import it. You need something in Terraform that's going to manage that resource moving forward. And I think you know up until this point, well, it should be a resource block that's going to manage our resources. So what I'm gonna do is start typing a resource block. This is going to be AWS underscore VPC and we can just give it a name. Maybe this is our production VPC. Now we need to provide some information about our existing VPC. So if we go back over here, well, the first thing we can see is, well, we have a CIDR block right here. It's 10.0.0.0 slash 16. So let's go ahead and add that to our configuration. So if we do that, we would add CIDR block right here, and we would provide the IP address. Now, of course, we know we can also use a variable for this as well. So let's go ahead and do that. Variables, we create a new variable called CIDR block, right? We can call it really whatever we want. Type is going to be string, and then we'll go ahead and set a default value directly in here as our IP address. Then what we can do is go over to, looks like I put a double quote there. Then what we can do is we can go over to our main.tf and we can get rid of this and we can call our variable right there. All right, so that's the first piece of writing our resource block. Now we wanna make sure that this resource block matches our configuration as much as possible. So let's hit enter here. Let's look at a few of the settings for our particular VPC. So if I go over here, we have default tenancy, which is the default, so that's fine. We've got enabled host name, so we can go ahead and enable that right there. So if we go back over here, we can do enable DNS host names, and that will just be true, right? Really easy. Go back over here and look at some of our other configurations. We've got DNS resolution enabled, all right? And so we can do enable, so we can add here enable DNS support equals true. Okay, great. And then the last thing we wanna do is we wanna make sure we add the name, and the name is going to be in the tags here. And what we can do is go ahead and add our specific tags for our VPC. So we'll do our open curly braces here. We can do name equals, and this one was called import-vpc. So let's go over and double check that, import-vpc, great. Okay, so we've got our tag in there. Now this is very similar to our resource that's already in AWS. Great, now how do we actually import it? Well, in this case, there's multiple ways that you can actually import resources into Terraform management. Now, the newest and latest greatest is to use it, what's called an import block, and we touched on that earlier in the course. Now, an import block is actually very, very simple. All we have to do is provide two pieces of information. We wanna tell Terraform where do you wanna import it to. In this case, it's going to be our resource block up here. We wanna import that existing resource and start managing it with this resource block. The other part is determining what do we want to import, right? And in this case, it's going to be our VPC. So let's start out with typing two here, and then we're gonna say AWS VPC production, or AWS VPC production here. <clears throat> and then we're gonna provide our resource name for our block above, AWS underscore VPC 
dot production, right? That is the name for this block. Great, that's exactly what we want. Now we need to tell it what to import. So I'm gonna type in ID equals, and then what we can do is go over to our VPC and we can grab the VPC ID in this case. So I'll copy that. And that's what we're gonna provide Terraform. So by using our credentials that we already have in our environment variables, what Terraform is gonna do, it's gonna to go to our AWS account. It's gonna look for VPC with this ID and it's going to import it into this particular resource block, all right? And then we can start managing that resource moving forward with Terraform. So let's go ahead and check this out. If we go down to the bottom, let me pull this back up a little bit. If I do a Terraform init, so go ahead and initialize this. It's gonna download the latest version of the AWS provider in this case. So we'll go ahead and download that. Great, we've done that. And we're just gonna go straight to Terraform Validate, make sure everything on our configuration looks good. Great. And then let's go straight into Terraform Apply. And we're gonna hit yes. So you can see the result of here. Before we had zero to add, zero to change, zero to destroy. But now look, there's actually part of our plan. It says there's one resource that we're going to import now. And that's exactly what we wanna do. So I'm gonna go ahead and say yes, we want to import that. Great, it says now we have imported our resource. Now, if you look over here, we have a Terraform state file. If you click in that, if we go down, look, now we have our production VPC. It's being managed by Terraform. Now, we can prove that by a few different ways. First of all, once you import a resource, well, you don't need this import block anymore, so you can actually get rid of it, okay? And so if we do a Terraform apply, it's gonna say, hey, there's no changes here, right? So no changes because we don't need the import block anymore because, well, we've already imported it into Terraform. Now, the next thing to prove that, well, Terraform is now managing this is let's go ahead and add a new tag in here. We can add a new tag called managed by equals, and let's say it's managed by Terraform. Great. Now, if I hit up and hit Terraform apply, it's going to change one resource here and say yes, it's modifying that. If we go over to our VPCs and I refresh it, now if we go to tags, there is our new tag right here, managed by Terraform. So now you can actually see that Terraform is managing this configuration. Now this configuration also has a bunch of subnets, it has route tables and all that good stuff. And so what we could do is we can go ahead and write our configurations in order to import these subnets, Right here, we can import these route tables and all that good stuff. However, I wanna show you one quick trick here. Instead of mainly writing out our configuration, Terraform actually supports a flag called generate config output. Now, this is an experimental configuration, but right now they don't plan to make backward incompatible changes. However, it is labeled as experimental as of now. So what we can do is a few things. We can go ahead and grab this subnet ID here, right, subnet ID, great. We can go back over here and I can add an import block. Import, we wanna import that subnet. Well, we don't have a resource block yet, so we can do two equals, and let's assume it would be AWS underscore subnet dot, and then this will be, let's see, this was public two, so let's just call this dot public two, okay? And then we would do the ID equals, and I copied that ID from the subnet right here. Now, of course, as we saw before, we would need to write a resource block, but Terraform has a way that it can go grab information from that subnet. It can actually create our resource block for us. So let's check that out. So if I pull this back over here, and I'm gonna clear the screen here, what we can do is do a Terraform plan. We can do generate plan and we can add the flag of generate config out and we give it a path. So in this case, let's say it's going to be subnet.hcl. So Terraform plan, generate config out, subnet.hcl. Now this is where Terraform is going to write the new resource block that it configures, right? There's no subnet.hcl in our directory right now. Terraform is going to create it and it's going to put our new resource block in there hopefully. So we hit enter here. It's going to generate that. Watch over here on the left. It looks like there's a missing argument on here. However, I got some issues on this before, but if you look over on the left, now we have a subnet.hcl file, all right? So if I pull this back down, 
you can see that this resource block was generated by Terraform. So it says, please review and move them into your main configuration files. Okay, great, we can do that. So let's copy the generated resource block that Terraform created for us. I'm gonna delete it from here. We'll put it inside of our main in here. And then what we can do is we can look at some of these configurations. So US East 1B, availability zone, right? Anything that says null, I'm just gonna get rid of in here because we probably don't need it. And a lot of these are just default configurations in here as well. And we'll leave all of our tags in there. So hopefully everything looks good there. You can see we've got our CIDR block, we've got our availability zone, all that good stuff. So now we have a resource block that we can import to. Well, we've already added it to our import right here, AWS subnet, public two, and that's exactly what it called it, right? Public two right here. So now we should be able to import it. So let's see if this works. So I pull this back up here, we'll clear it. Terraform apply and hit enter here. We'll cross our fingers. Looks like there are maybe a few required configurations on here that we would need. So map owner IP false. So let's actually just get rid of some of those right here because we probably don't need these configurations in here. Actually, most of these, we'll keep this one on here. Let's get rid of a few of these. Probably don't need the majority of these things. IP name, let's just get rid of that. And we'll just leave our tags. Let's get our tags all and leave our VPC. So let's leave it at that and let's try that again. So clear the screen, I hit Terraform apply. And it looks like there is a conflict with an availability zone. So availability zone ID, we don't want that. We just want the AZ here. So if we do a Terraform FMT, we'll clean that up a little bit. And let's try a Terraform apply one more time. Again, this is going to be something that you're probably gonna to have to do if you use this import because Terraform's gonna go try to grab all of the configurations and set all the arguments as much as possible. And most likely there's gonna be a lot of arguments in there that you don't need. So you can go clean some of those things up. So it looks like everything looks good. It says one to import. So we'll say yes here. So we've imported it, great. Now again, we know that we can get rid of our import. There's nothing wrong with keeping this. You can actually just comment that out if you want to. So you know in the future that you imported this existing resource or you can just take it out. It doesn't really matter. But again, if I commented it out, if I do a Terraform apply, it's gonna say there's no changes because well, there's no changes to our resource, right? Zero added, zero changed, zero destroyed. However, now we are managing this particular subnet using Terraform and to prove it, we can also add another tag in here, I'll go ahead and add the same tag down here, manage by, and we'll clean that up just a little bit. We'll run a Terraform format, and get that formatted, great. Clear the screen, Terraform apply. Yes, we wanna make that change, so go ahead and do that. It changed it, so we we're on public two, so if we go back over to AWS, do a refresh on public two, if we click on that, Pull that up, look at our tags, and there we go. Now it's managed by Terraform. So now we're managing this particular resource with Terraform. So again, really easy way that you can import existing resources that are already running in your accounts and start managing it using Terraform. And there's two ways you can do that. Again, you can go write it manually like we did up here. So write a resource block and then use the import block to import it. And then again, you can also use that generate config out flag to have Terraform automatically create a resource block for you. Again, it may be longer because you're gonna have to clean that up most likely. But again, you saw that the Terraform and that flag automatically created that subnet for us. And we can go ahead and delete that file. We don't need that any longer. And then we were able to move it over here and then use this import block in order to go ahead and add that into our Terraform state and start managing this particular resource using it. Now, one thing I wanna also note that you can also use things like for each statements and all that in order to manage these. So if we were to write a nice for each statement in here, right, for each, if we had a variable called you know, public subnets and we had those defined, you could absolutely import all those resources that are already running into your account 
into a resource block that uses for each and things like that. And that, that way you're still following our best practices in terms of managing our resources using Terraform, but you can still import those existing resources into these more complex resource blocks for you. All right. So hopefully that was helpful for you. Again, ways that you can import existing resources from your accounts into Terraform and then obviously start managing them moving forward. All right, so hopefully that was helpful for you and we'll see you in the next video.